Welcome to the Irish Kidney Association Service of Remembrance and Thanksgiving, which will be brought to you this year from Newman University Church in St. Stephen's Green, Dublin. The service opens here in the Circle of Life National Organ Donor Commemorative Garden overlooking the beautiful Galway Bay. This garden, created six years ago by Strange Boat Donor Foundation, commemorates and celebrates the lives and generosity of spirit of organ donors and their families. It is a special place for all to remember and reflect on loved ones. That was Eleanor Shanley and John Feely performing the song, Strange Boat. We can now join Colin McKenzie, the National Honorary Chairman of the Irish Kidney Association from Newman University Church, for the first virtual and 35th annual service of remembrance and thanksgiving. Good morning. I'm Colin McKenzie, National Chairman of the Irish Kidney Association. It's my privilege and honour to be here and to greet and welcome you to this special occasion. It provides us with an opportunity to express our sincere gratitude to all organ donor families who through their profound compassion and generosity have given hope and new life to many patients. It's my wish that you find this service both meaningful and respectful. 
in acknowledging and honouring all organ donors. You are welcome regardless of your faith or philosophy. Donors from all backgrounds have given the gift of life, and patients from all backgrounds have received the gift of life. I extend a warm welcome to Archbishop Dermot Martin, Archbishop Michael Jackson, Father Gary Chamberlain, PP of this beautiful Newman University Church in the heart of Dublin. But wherever you are, we welcome you to our service of remembrance. In the opening procession, the cross will be brought to the altar by Sergeant Paul Gifford, who received a kidney transplant 17 years ago. The Book of the Gospel will be brought to the altar by Carol Moore, Chief Executive of the Irish Kidney Association. The candles will be brought to the altar by Garrett French, who received two single lung transplants a year apart. And also, Tyg Farrell, aged 13 years, who was born one day after his grandfather Michael Golding's organs were donated in 2007. Let us pray. God, our Father, as we gather together in thanksgiving for the care and kindness shown by our nurses, carers, and doctors, and in remembrance of our loved ones who have gone before us, we ask you to help us to recognize your healing presence among us and to find joy and comfort in your love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Ezekiel 34. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. 
I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them down out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. I will shepherd the flock with justice. A reading from the book of Revelations, a new heaven and a new earth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, 
the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. This is the word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up onto the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who could forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. The Gospel of the Lord. The young man answered, the one who showed him kindness, Jesus said to him, Go and do as he did. We celebrate today a gift of life that moves positively and lovingly in two directions at the same time. Donor families who have selflessly and generously thought of others ahead of their own loved one whom they have lost, have given life to someone urgently awaiting a vital organ. They have done this at the heart of personal grief. The person who receives a vital organ shares the gift of life renewed with everyone he or she meets. People such as this do so by
by the radiant determination to live life to the full as a tribute and an honor to their donor. Joy and sorrow, loss and restoration, come together in this gift of life. The Good Samaritan, within the Christian tradition, points us towards selfless love and life renewed. Someone on the road stops and cares without hesitating to count the cost. People like our donor families and our recipients today are involved in this practical expression of care. And they live the spirit of this parable every day. This ancient story has a meaning today that is at the very core of our gathering. And this human story is the answer to the question, but who is my neighbor? I've attended the annual service of remembrance and thanksgiving of the Irish Kidney Association uh, for, for many, many years now. Uh, it's always been a very moving experience. This is probably my last time to be able to be there as Archbishop of Dublin as a near retirement. Your gatherings are unique. A moment of your grief had become a moment of promise, promise of newness and life for somebody else. Your generosity at a moment of grief benefited another family enormously as they receive a precious gift from someone, from someone they may have never known. Humankind is uh, built, uh, was created as a family. Uh, the human family is built up by solidarity and is uh, broken down by self-centeredness. We all know the story of the Good Samaritan, about this man who was uh, taken by thieves, left abandoned on the road, and various notable people walk by and leave him. And then the Good Samaritan comes, and he's moved to compassion, and he takes him, puts it on his shoulders, brings him to a knee, and ensures that his wounds are healed. And we naturally look to the Good Samaritan as the hero of the story. But we, what do we know about the man who was found lying on the road? The Gospel tells us nothing, no name, no nationality, no status, no family tree. And the moral of the story is that uh, we don't need to know those type of details. All that is important is that this was a man, a human being in need. And that should be enough to move each of, each of us to compassion, also in today's world. If God is love, being a follower of Jesus and being a believer must mean that we too become loving people, thinking not just of ourselves, but even in the midst, as in your case, of the greatest sorrow, recognizing the need of someone we may not know, and changing a situation which seemed tragic and hopeless and meaningless into a gesture of kindness and love that endures. I would now like to introduce to you three symbols these represent events of great significance to us. The first is the forget-me-not flowers, the Irish Kidney Association's emblem, which many of you are wearing here today, representing organ transplantation. The brown wood has a bandage over the graft of the flower, symbolizing the transplanted life-giving organ. The forget-me-not flowers are brought to the altar today by kidney donor grandmother Pauline Callahan from Tala, who donated a kidney in 214 to her grandchild, Leila Henderson, age nine. And she is accompanied by her twin sister, Maddie Rose. The organ donor card reminds us all to carry the card and indicate our willingness to be a donor. The donor card today is brought to the altar by Natalie Johnston. Natalie is from Balbriggan and she's accompanied by her daughter Claire. Natalie's husband Roy 
passed away this summer and his organs were donated. The Book of Remembrance contains the names of organ donors whose families have consented to allow us to inscribe their loved one's name in the Roll of Honour in our Book of Remembrance. It is carried to the altar today by Gina Lenahan, a pharmacist and mother of three. Gina received a heart transplant in 215 and lives in Ranala. We will now commence the service of light. Each lit candle represents a donor. And for many, it is also symbolic of baptism and the way that many share in the life of Christ by sharing in the life of his church. It reminds us that our loved ones never leave the presence of God. I would like to invite Harry Ward, a kidney transplant recipient from Baldoyle, who was transplanted 13 years ago and is captain of Transplant Team Ireland, to light his candle for the commencement of the service of light. Harry will also be joined by Deirdre Fall. Deirdre from Dorky received a liver transplant in 2003 in the United Kingdom. She is a world record Transplant Games title holder and a member of Transplant Team Ireland. Deirdre will join Harry in the lighting of candles. Even when at dawn the sky shall weep 
I welcome the opportunity to participate in today's service of remembrance and thanksgiving, organised by the Irish Kidney Association. In the more than half a century since the first kidney transplant took place in Ireland, that most precious gift of life and living has been offered to thousands of our citizens. This life-saving or life-changing gift is made possible through a generosity of human nature so worthy of recognition. Today's event is thus an important one, bringing together those generous individuals and families who have performed an act of great altruism towards a fellow human being and the grateful recipients of that profound action of human solidarity. Some of you with us today may have made this gift at a time of great personal tragedy. Others amongst you are living donors who have selflessly donated a kidney to a friend, family member or stranger in need. All of you have enriched and extended the lives of others, have played a vital role in the making possible of new chapters of hope and possibility for those suffering from kidney failure. That so many recipients and their families are joining us here today is surely a powerful testament to the great gratitude felt for the new lease of life that has been offered to them or their loved ones and a demonstration of the great difference an organ transplant can make to a recipient's life and to the lives of their family and friends. Among the events Sabine and I have organised since I became President, I recall a St. Patrick's Day reception held in Oris in Uchtaron in 2018 for organ donors, recipients and their families. The wonderful sense of solidarity between all those in the room on that St. Patrick's Day was deeply moving and remains with us. In terms of medical science and practice, organ transplant is one of the greatest medical advances of this modern age. Currently, some 4,000 people in Ireland are enjoying an extended and better life because of the generosity of organ donors. However, while organ transplant is now a commonplace technique in Ireland, there are unfortunately too many people who continue to die each year while waiting for transplants. Encouraging and achieving donation remains, I am aware, a challenge it is critical that we all play a part in nurturing both public and private conversations on the importance of organ donation. We know that deceased organ donation remains rare in Ireland, with an average of 80 multi-organ donors from the approximately 30,000 deaths each year in this country. We also know that currently some 500 patients are awaiting life-saving transplants, and you all will understand that behind those figures lie the many anxious family members desperately hoping their spouse, child, parent or sibling will become a beneficiary of the powerful gesture of organ donation. Discussion around organ donation is of course and will always be a very sensitive and emotional one. Tied up as it is with thoughts of loss and bereavement, it can also however be a conversation of hope and renewal on commitment and the intangible joy of giving, of life continuing and of the wonderful legacy it constitutes, one that we can leave behind by donating our organs to others. I am well aware of recent months having been particularly difficult for many of those awaiting kidney transplants. The risks of COVID-19 saw the upsetting but necessary halting of the transplant programme in March with significant anguish and disappointment for many patients whose transplant had been scheduled or those who were awaiting that all-important telephone call to tell them a kidney had become available. I am so glad that after many weeks of worry and uncertainty, the programme has now resumed, that once more patients are receiving the cherished gift of life from generous donors or from those who have had the courage to translate a tragic loss of their own into a profoundly generous act towards others. The development of organ transplants stands as one of the great triumphs of human scientific achievement. It also stands as testament to the great spirit of human solidarity that exists here in Ireland and across the world. May I sincerely thank all those of you here today who have donated an organ to a friend or loved one, or who have made the brave decision to donate the organs of a deceased member 
of your family to a stranger in great need. Your citizenship, compassion and care is truly something to be cherished, acknowledged and celebrated. Marfuckle Square. Finally, may I also extend my gratitude to the Irish Kidney Association for all they do in the support of patients suffering from kidney disease and for the support they give to their families. It is an association of which I am very proud to be patron and I wish you every success as you continue with your vital work. Tres Liamle, Garamila Mahaki Gilea, Agsper Banacht. Seamus Heaney won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1995. Born in Northern Ireland, he was the oldest of nine children, and until his teenage years, Haney lived on his small family farm. Later, he moved to Belfast, and then later in life taught at Berkeley, Harvard, and Oxford. This poem, Miracle, considers the healing of the paralytic in Mark II from the perspective of his friends. It's taken from Heaney's book, Human Chain, published in 2010. Poems that Heaney wrote after he suffered a stroke in 2005, and which concentrate on suffering and mortality. Miracle by Seamus Heaney not the one who takes up his bed and walks, but the ones who have known him all along and carry him in, their shoulders numb, the ache and stoop deep locked in their backs, the stretcher handles slippery with sweat, and no let up until he's strapped on tight, made tiltable and raised to the tiled roof, then lowered for healing. Be mindful of them as they stand and wait for the burn of the paid out ropes to cool, their slight light-headedness and incredulity to pass those who had known him all along. Let us now pray together in the words our Saviour taught us. Arnahar atha ar niav, gan eifr danam, gadaga de riacht, gan nienter de choler and talav, mar nienter ar niav. Ar na ron lehul tor dun inu, agus ma dun ar vika, mar wahmi da ve kuna fein, agus na leg shin agahu, akser shin o ulk. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. I would now like to invite Alan Finnegan to come forward to offer a testimonial. Six years ago, my brother Paul suffered a catastrophic cerebral aneurysm on the eve of his 48th birthday. Two days later, we gathered as a family and with the kind and gentle guidance of the staff of St. Vincent's ICU, we made the heartbreaking decision to let him go. The decision to donate his organs was easily made, a moment of catharsis in a wave of grief. Later that night, after saying my final goodbye to Paul, a nurse informed me that the organ transplant crew were ready to go and recipients had been notified for transplantation. I drove home that night strangely elated, my sorrow tempered by the knowledge that Paul's story hadn't quite finished. In the weeks that followed, we struggled with the giant void Paul's death had left in our lives. His absence felt in his family home, the workplace we shared together, at birthdays, communions and funerals. We were informed that the transplantation of his kidneys and liver had been successful, news which came as solace to us all. But it wasn't until we received a letter one Saturday morning, some months later, that the magnitude of organ donation was made apparent to us. Here, in a handwritten note, was the testimonial of a life changed, of new beginnings thanks to the transplant of one of Paul's kidneys. 
In that moment, I recognised that the act of organ donation was as much a gift to us as it was to the recipient. On behalf of everyone who holds Paul's memory dear, I wish to thank the brilliant transplant teams in Beaumont and St Vincent's Hospitals for the gift they provided us by bringing renewed life to others. Hello, this is Michelle O'Donnell, and I'm very honoured to be involved in this inter-church service of remembrance and thanksgiving for all those involved in organ donation. The service is a wonderful way of remembering loved ones whose organs have been donated, and it's a great way of thanking those families for the gift of life that a transplant can give. To receive the gift of an organ is truly amazing and life-changing, not just for the person who receives it, but for their families also, who have also been affected by the condition of their loved one. This service is organised by the Irish Kidney Association, who do wonderful work in this area. But without your help, they would not be in a position to help anybody. It's a vital service that we should all support in whatever way that we can. So from the bottom of my heart to all the families who have selflessly donated the organs of a loved one at a very, very difficult time, thank you. What greater gift could there be in life? Thank you again. Good morning and welcome to Beaumont Hospital, the home of the National Kidney Transplant Service. We're standing here at the Organ Donor Memorial Sculpture, commissioned by the Irish Kidney Association and designed by Mr. Dennis and Martina Goggins of the Strange Boat Foundation at the main entrance to the hospital. Each day, hundreds of people pass this memorial to organ donors on their way into and out of the hospital. Visiting any hospital is often a time of anxiety and stress in our lives. We may be worried about our own health or the health of a loved one who is sick. However, for the families and friends of a person who's lost their lives in often sudden and tragic circumstances, the decision of the bereaved to see past their own grief and devastation and donate their loved one's organs is especially remarkable. Equally, the decision of a living donor to overcome their fear of major surgery and literally give of themselves is a tremendous act of generosity. This memorial is a tribute to each and every one of those people who have reached out in a real and tangible way so that the life of the recipient of the donated organ can be enhanced. In the National Kidney Transplant Service, we have now performed more than 5,000 transplants and more than 2,500 people enjoy the extraordinary benefit of a functioning kidney transplant. As a transplant surgeon, I and my colleagues have the privilege of seeing firsthand the tremendous benefit that a successful kidney transplant has for each recipient. None of this would be possible without the extraordinary generosity of each organ donor who literally gives the gift of life and living. It is an amazing thing to witness the transformation of a successful transplant, not only on the recipient themselves, but on all the people they love. I know that each recipient holds their donor close to their hearts and constantly remembers them with gratitude and affection. On behalf of all the members of the transplant team here in the National Kidney Transplant Service, I'd like to acknowledge every kidney donor and their families in this special tribute to their memory. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give thanks for the love and generosity of all organ donors and their families. We thank you for their lives, the love they shared and the joy they brought to so many lives. We greatly cherish their memory and thank you, Lord, for the years they were with us and for those who continue to be with us. We pray that they all may receive an eternal reward. Amen. There are a number of people I would like to thank for their presence here. Archbishop Dermot Martin, Archbishop Michael Jackson, and Father Gary Chamberlain, and all who are involved in this great church. I thank you for your kindness and cooperation and support. 
I thank all who participated in our service and all the other donor families and transplant recipients who have contributed to this unique service today. I would also like to thank Annette Daly. Annette has been our calligrapher for the last 35 years and has entered each donor's name in our Book of Remembrance. And before we go our separate ways, let us bow our heads as we offer one final blessing. May the Lord be a sure path beneath your feet, a bright light before you, a kindly shepherd behind you, this day, this night, and always. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.